Hello everyone. I'm happy to introduce uh, these five people for this session. This session is five for the future. How can someone become a sponsor or contributor and how a company can donate an employee time to the WordPress project. And I'm happy to uh, invite here um, Courtney Robertson. And so they are going to cover the topic uh, that I mentioned and if you have questions you can um, ask them and they will be happy to answer you. Hello. 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 Hello, everybody. So we have a very exciting uh, topic that we are discussing today. Before we start, I guess it's best that we all quickly introduce ourselves. I can start. Uh, so my name is Sai Shankar. I am a full-time uh, contributor to WordPress. My work is sponsored by Automatic. My focus specifically is on improving contribution for WordPress contributor experience and, and fight for the future. And I'm currently running a working group to build a mentorship program for WordPress. That's about me. I live in Kochi, India. What do you call me? Hi there, I'm Courtney Robertson. I, my first contribution to WordPress was in 2009 when I checked guests in for a, mid, a work camp mid-Atlantic before we had a foundation. So there was no foundation yet. WordPress events, people were just doing them however they did them. Uh, so I volunteered because I didn't get a ticket in time. I joined the WordPress training team in 2014. I've been contributing to that team ever since. We're the ones making content on learn.wordpress.org. I spent time teaching and in uh, working in plugin companies as well in support and knowledge base articles. These days, you can find me for the last two years. I have worked at GoDaddy, and in that time, my role has evolved. I'm a developer advocate, and I've been that since I began. But what that also looks like is that I uh, advocate for how we responsibly handle open source software, including the community aspects like getting people sponsored. Um, and so. I do that. I have some responsibilities internally at GoDaddy. I also contribute a lot to the WordPress training team and other teams. And my schedule varies based upon where the need is at the time. So I have to do a lot of maintaining my own priorities um, and knowing where those priorities lie. So you could say I'm full time, but also I have internal things that are making sure our booth here is good, right? So there's that. We have our own. Oh, look at that. You're fancy. <laughs> wow. You're fancy um, in it. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Um, Manuel Blagonich. Uh, I've been contributing to WordPress actively since the very first work of Europe in Leiden. That was where a lot of sparkle started for a lot of European communities. I started contributing to WordPress even before, but generally I'm a designer, so I'm not like that connected to, to WordPress. Like for the past six months, I've been doing more WordPress projects than in the last 10 years altogether, because I'm focusing on the design. Uh, in the community, I was uh, part of communi uh, community team. Uh, I was mentoring work camps and meetups. Uh, I was part of the first work camp incubator program. Um, and alongside that, I was also in the organizing team for work camp Europe in Vienna, in Paris, and in Belgrade of which in the last two I was leading the communications team. So I was contributing quite a lot at the time. It was um, a big emotional toll, eventually, because communications team is working throughout the year. Uh, but I wouldn't change that experience for anything in, in, in life, because I met so many incredible people. Um, and I'd like, first of all, to just say thank you to all, um, and a round of applause for you as well, because some of you, I, I know, I remember you volunteered uh, uh, in a lot of events, so I just like to have a for you. Thank you. Uh, this is Afsana. I'm from Dhaka, Bangladesh. So I travel around 14 hours to be here with you all. Uh, so I started my WordPress um, journey back in 2009 when I was just using it blog. I was not contributing at that time. Uh, later, after my undergrad, I started working with WordPress product company. Uh, then I joined my first WordCamp back in 2017, which was in Singapore. 
So that was not a sponsored trip. Uh, I joined the WordCamp because I wanted to, even if I'm not a developer. Uh, I was completely no code and before attending that WordCamp, uh, my idea of WordCamp was it's mostly for developer. Then I joined WordCamp Singapore and my whole idea was changed for better. Uh, after that, I got involved in my local community. Uh, we had our first WordCamp in Dhaka and we had around 800 uh, people attending our WordCamp in the first WordCamp ever. Our ticket got sold out in just 40 minutes. So the community was very active from uh, many years, but we didn't have the WordCamp. Uh, when we had the first one, then we s uh, started seeing more people interested to contribute to WordPress. Uh, even in my first WordCamp, we didn't have uh, any female organizer except me. We didn't have female speaker. Uh, we kind of influenced one to talk. Uh, after that, we had our um, regular meetup. People started coming. Female started to participate. And right now, even in this WordCamp Europe, we have, uh, except me, there are a few other female and there are a lot of Bangladeshi people joining. I just took a picture of all Bangladeshi people making effort to WordCamp Europe. So, yeah. Now, I, then after uh, WordCamp Dhaka, I was also part of WordCamp Europe last year uh, as an organizer. I was organizer for WordCamp Asia this year. And uh, I'm also a community deputy for Make WordPress. So I'm trying to help make people make team by uh, supporting the community. Thank you. Wow. What a panel, not counting myself, of course. <laughs> but really, I think we have the best crowd to talk about the topic that we have today, which is Five for the Future. The very important topic of uh, paying contributors and very important talk about topic of yeah, you know, companies getting more contributors. But before we start all that, like the title of our topic is Five for the Future. I think we should briefly go into that. Like, what what is it exactly? Like, some of you might have heard of it, some of you might not have heard of it. I think. It's time to explore for us to start there. Like, what does that mean? What does it mean for contributions? What does it mean for WordPress? So I'm gonna I'm gonna start by asking Courtney that question. Like, what do you think is five for the future? Can you just briefly explain what your feelings are, thoughts are? So if you go to the actual page, uh, it's under wordpress.org slash five dash four dash the future. Um, you'll find it. And uh, basically, Matt had an idea that he shared on his blog some time ago, that those that are making their earnings through WordPress give back to that. So all open source projects need to sustain the project in some manner. That means that people show up and do the work of that. Sometimes people will need to be paid for the work that they do. And other times uh, people just, it's a side hustle for them or a, a side project even, something they just really are passionate about. And they'll do it either way. Um, but Five for the Future as a program is there for both individuals and companies to say, I'm going to give 5% of my working resources to that endeavor. Um, and so I think we're still figuring out sometimes what it is and what that looks like in different contexts. Thank you for the important clarification. So uh, we learn what, what this is, but why is this significant? Like, why do we need this thing called Five for the Future? I mean, there's been a lot of discussions, especially in 2022, uh, uh, around the fact that why do we really need a program? I mean, WordPress is built by volunteers all around the world. Do we need companies to come in? I mean, in a way, if you look at it, it seems like a corporate takeover of WordPress, right? So do we really need companies coming in and paying people? I mean, can't all just volunteers do it? So I'd like to hear thoughts from, okay, I, have, I see Afshana here, who's a, I know is a sponsored contributor. So what do you think, Afshana? Uh, well, uh... Actually, they do, uh, because uh, when I started contributing, I was not doing it as a sponsor contributor, right? Um, I tried to influence, I tried to inspire my local community to uh, contribute. Some of the people started, some did for a few months, then they stopped. 
so what we did is like uh, I'm from the company called WP Developer. It's a WordPress product company. So I'm the CMO at WP Developer. At WP Developer, we try to uh, inspire our employees to contribute, uh, starting from me. So I try to share what I, I did for Make WordPress Team, how people can contribute without even uh, going to somewhere, because we live in a city called Dhaka, which has so much traffic. So people don't want to make even effort to go to the meetup. So how they can uh, contribute without going somewhere. So we uh, try to inspire our uh, teammates uh, and we started to um, do some in-house contribution day. Uh, what happened is like uh, at first we had uh, probably five to six people contributing, but from there they started contributing more. Uh, we had um, our regular kind of uh, meetings for to join WordPress meet, uh, Teams meeting. So in our meetings, uh, some people find it very interesting, said they describe it to the others, and others started contributing. So we announced that uh, every week, we will allow our team members to contribute to make WordPress for how many hours they want to contribute and that would be fully sponsored. So they can contribute during their office time. They don't have to do it on their personal time. What happened is like when uh, we announced that, some of the people who actually wanted to contribute but didn't have the time or energy to do it after office, they actually got interested. Uh, they got contribute. Uh, they started contributing, and after a while, uh, we found like uh, in last WordPress 6.1 release, uh, there was around 16 people from our team who contributed, and in last 6.2, uh, we had 32 people contributing from our team. Uh, we are a team of 120, so it's like more than 25% uh, people contributed uh, for WordPress core. So that's a big number. I, I think that's only happened because they were inspired and got that free time from the office to contribute. Yeah. Thank you, Shana. So what I'm hearing is like there is a space for sponsored contribution, especially because that is, I mean, WordPress is a huge project. It powers 14% of the internet. There's so many complex things in this project that cannot be done by volunteers. There's, there's so many big tasks and so many complicated tasks. Like some of them, yes, volunteers can do it, but volunteers, they may not have the bandwidth to do it. And it makes sense for somebody to pay people to do it. Right? So there is a space for volunteer contrib sp sponsor contributions. And, like, I've actually done some research on the number of uh, contributions myself, and I can say with certainty that at this point in time right now, most of the contributions, the majority of the contributions coming into WordPress are from the sponsored contributors, as in people who are paid for it. So what, yes, WordPress is a volunteer-run project, but there is indeed a space for that. So while on this topic, before we move on to the core of our discussion, I want to ask Manuel a question as well. I mean, Manuel, you are a volunteer contributor, and we were just talking about your experience as a volunteer contributor. So. As a volunteer who's done so much for WordPress, and I know you've been a, you've been part of uh, the incubator program, as you mentioned, you've been you've led WordCamp Europe in the past editions. So, what are your thoughts on Five for the Future as a volunteer who's pledged this time towards us? Well, first of all, I'd like to start by saying that there is not a contribution that doesn't matter, no matter how small it is. I mean, even if you try and go to contribute today like to, like yesterday and you go to Polyglot's team you start by translating 10 strings and then you go and translate another 10 strings you're doing a lot of effort and you are helping spread WordPress and for me WordPress is like sort of a freedom um, when I started uh, working with WordPress I, mean, I was completely a designer I didn't know uh, to write a line of PHP and uh, I started working with WordPress because of the codex and like nowadays, it's much more elaborate. Uh, a lot of things have changed. But even today, when you go like to make that work that work, you you get like so many resources on how to start contributing. So first of all, I would like to repeat again, 
every contribution matters. Um, when you, we said we thought about five for the future, uh, I at some point I contributed 50% of my time uh, to WordPress for the for these two work of Europe's where I was uh, part of the communications team. I at, at the end I just like wanted well, like to figure out how many hours did I contribute and what would I buy myself if I would like did client work and it I realized I could buy a Tesla uh, and it was like I don't know uh, I I wouldn't say. Uh, changing, but after after that last work in Europe where I was part of the organizing team, uh, I continued contributing to uh, community team, mentoring, meetups, work camps. Uh, part of the incubator program we started, uh, I, I was assigned to help uh, start meetup in Malaysia in Kota Kitabalu, uh, and we started with one meetup and then they uh, arranged another meetup. Eventually, they got a work camp. And at that point, I realized I cannot do it anymore. And for me, it was like, I don't know, I felt like betraying the community at that point because uh, I said I will like do it until the end. And then I, I realized that I cannot like emotionally sustain that anymore. Uh, at that point, because I'm a freelancer all my life, at that point, if I would have like a sort of someone who would step in and say, hey, man, do you want like to, to uh, continue contributing? I would say, yeah, probably. Um, so yeah, I think that we definitely need someone like that steps in and helps like these kind of folks. Um, I'm okay. I don't need any like help anymore, but uh, I'm just getting better on track and starting to contribute again. Uh, yeah. That's it. Wow, uh, you missed out on a Tesla, but thank you for me. I would say like the contributions <laughs> that you've done for WordPress, I, that's invaluable. Buddy, I don't need a Tesla. It's I okay. Know. I don't need one either. <laughs> <laughs> but really, I would say that your contributions are priceless. Like, as Matt says, WordPress is free in both prices at the same time. Like your contributions are priceless. Yeah, but and the, the important thing time. is that while I was like contributing, I met so many incredible people along the way. Uh, like yesterday and today, and this is my first work camp since work in Bucharest, which happened two months before COVID started. I spoke there, uh, and I haven't been anywhere. I mean, in my private life, a lot of things have changed. I bought a house, renovated a house, got two kids, got married. All things happened in like these four or five years. Uh, and constantly I'm like going 10 meters and I'm seeing someone who I have seen for the last time uh, four years ago. And that's like the most important thing about contributing to community. Um, and I would like to emphasize not to forget that. Excellent, thank you, thank you so much. Um, I think that brings us to a very important point. So we've, I think we've established that there is a need for sponsored contributions and there is a need to pay people who do contribute because there's, there's so much work that needs to be done. And yes, some of it can be done by volunteers, but some folks, I'm, I'm using an expression that I'm hearing from so many people, burn both ends of the candle while they try to contribute. It's a, it's a problem that we all should be aware of. And we should definitely pay contributors. And I, I, I can see several contributors out here, in this, even in this group, like who I think personally could benefit from sponsorship, which brings us to the core of our discussion today. And before we go ahead, I just have one more thing to say. If any one of you have any questions, please feel free to interrupt and ask. But after we end, we'll have a dedicated Q&A session yet. If you have any, if you want to like, have any pressing questions that you want to ask, feel free to ask us. So I'm going to ask Courtney here, who's, who I know is very, very passionate about this topic, as I am. Um, well, the core of our top discussion here is how can uh, someone be a sponsored contributor? So we, there's a bunch of voluntary contributors here in this WordCamp Europe. They've done a lot of work, and some of them they actually like. I I know real examples of this who've set aside client work and Emmanuel himself mentioned his own example who they've set aside real client work to support WordPress. So how can we adequately compensate them and how can they find uh, sponsorship? What are your thoughts? I'd like to hear from. Wow. Okay. So I I spent many years not sponsored myself. Uh, like Emmanuel, I ran my own business for a while. I was not good at it. Even though I was a background as a business education teacher, I was great at doing the work of dev and code because that's what I could teach. I was great at training my clients. I was not great at the business administration as a solo person. 
not at all. And I remember that going to the first WordCamp in US, the first WordCamp US event, it was a financial hardship for me, and I could drive to it. And I live in America, and it was a financial hardship for me to do this. Um, and that, <clears throat> it, it meant a lot, I guess, at that time for me. And in fact, shortly after that, I had two children close together and took three years off from contributing, for the most part, because I just could not fit it in my schedule. Um, there was nothing that, I don't know, some of that probably couldn't have been changed, but when I started to resurface, pandemic was happening right around the time that my children were old enough that I could start going back to camps again, but pandemic happened right then. And so um, I had an opportunity to go teach at a boot camp that sort of afforded me a little bit of time, but it wasn't a lot to contribute again. Um, and I saw my own journey of, I really want to be sponsored and I want to do more. I, want, I, like, I love that I was teaching WordPress, but what was happening is that while teaching WordPress, if you've ever worked in a plugin company, and one of my coworkers is here, they'll attest to, um, <clears throat> you need to know a proficient amount of PHP even in the support forums to be able to answer questions correctly. And they weren't doing that in this bootcamp program. And so I said, oh, I just want to go fix it and make official resources on learn.wordpress.org that say, here's what you need as the minimum skill level to get that thing. But to do that, I needed more time than my teaching role could give me to do that thing. And we're in the process of working on that within the training team these days. Um, but I flat out cold called my now manager, Adam Warner, who many of you may know. Um, I found him in between sessions during one of the online word camps um, that was in the sponsor booth of that time. And I said, hey, if GoDaddy would ever sponsor me, let me know. A few months go by and he was already looking to expand his team and he said, we have this developer advocate position that we would like to bring on, and it seems like you know a, a, de a deep amount of developing and working with developers and how to speak to them. Uh, sometimes developers need help translating to human languages. Uh, so, so yes, those are skill sets that I have, and I applied, and now I get to do that. But I remember the journey of having to sleep on my college roommate's couch and barely affording parking for WordCamp US. Um, and juggling the funds at that time. And so I'm wildly passionate about unburdening people that have the skill sets. For me, that looked like I wasn't great at running my business. I was good at teaching, um, and I love what I get to do these days. But for some people, if you're running your own business, it's accounting for if you want to give that back, then making that a sales advantage point and why customers should come to you. Budgeting things so that you can afford that time off. If that is not an option that you want to pursue, then, then don't. Sometimes it takes this confidence of, like I had, of I knew a person that I felt that I trusted pretty well in the space that might know of an opportunity. And so I started shopping that around. Um, for others that are on the flip side of this, uh, if you, well, okay, Maureen, if you want to be sponsored, other options include setting up in your GitHub profile. You don't even have to use GitHub really for this. You can set up a profile and accept donations. Um, Joe Dolson had started that for his work on accessibility. He is part of the accessibility team. He reviews a lot of what goes on in every release for accessibility-related areas. Joe is an accessibility consultant. But Joe needed to do that without having all of the client work going on, and so he set up his GitHub profile. He let the community know, and people started giving. Some individuals just started giving in on a regular basis to the work that Joe does. So you can accept regular donation type of things, but then the flip side, now that I'm at GoDaddy, my role at GoDaddy is broadly open source community, and I get to work, another coworker is here with me, um, Mike, in the back, and so helps work on our initiatives of how we are, as a company, also being responsible and contributing, and how we allocate staff resources for that, because you have to account for that somewhere. Uh, and I've learned what the red tape is in corporate America life of how to get approval for that. So when you work for really big enterprises, they don't want to write checks to just some random person that just wants to be paid to just go do that thing, right? They want employees, maybe conversations, like WordPress has a release coming out, what should we know as far as our hosting goes, or what those things. So they need to know details like this. And that can create some red tape in terms of just giving money out. Some companies, especially those that are not publicly held, can adapt fast 
for those needs. Automatic is great at that. Um, my budget was set October of last year. I don't get to decide things on a sudden whim for how we spend certain money. And so from that side of it, um, and I asked Tari ahead of time about mentioning this, my, uh, when I'm not contributing and on the clock and doing mom things, I have a six and a seven year old almost, um, when I'm not busy with all of that, I helped co-found the WP Community Collective, and that is a nonprofit. It is running through Open Collective. Open Collective is a foundation that exists for open source projects, publicly transparent in how the banking gets handled. So if you don't want to stuff money in an envelope and mail it off to your favorite WordPress contributor, across any of our 21 teams, it doesn't have to be the core team, it could be We've got, tw no, 22 now, because yesterday we launched a new team, yes. So um, if you're not wild about shoving money in an envelope and hoping the mail ar arrives for them, uh, the WP Community Collective, or the WPCC, exists so that whether a person or an organization, a company, would like to give money to those that want to be sponsored, then that organization exists. And I will say we are still in the early phases of this. Um, we've invited the executive director of WordPress to have a, a say in what areas are being sponsored, what are the needs of the project. What does WordPress need? We know that we need people in plug and review team because they were small, backlogged, and people want to retire, and they rightly should. They say, this is time and, and I'm done here. Um, we know that that's a need. We know that there is a need for more accessibility work. We know that um, there are needs variously across the project, and so, we're just beginning to get going, and I can say that my own employer does fund every year uh, diverse speaker initiatives to get diverse speakers to WordCamps as speakers. And um, I got the email confirmation while I've been here that that is almost done. And it's been a few months in the process because internally at my employer, it takes some time to clear all of the red tape to then onboard a new vendor and then transfer the funds to that vendor that will then transfer the, which is the WPCC, and then transfer those funds to the recipients. So there's a lot of work that is still there to be done. And I'm studying what other open source projects do as well, about how other open source projects fund contributors, because I think, gosh, there are some really big, I mean, think about every server out there is probably running Linux in some fashion. How do they fund what they do on the servers? There's entire open source stuff in the automotive industry, who knew? and it's on Mars, inside of the rover. It's everywhere, and so how do these other big open source projects handle their funds? And I'm just starting to touch re researching and re like understanding that and what can we learn from some of those spaces as well. So if you're at an organization that wishes to give funds, see me if you are a person that wants the courage to go up and boldly tell people, here I am, I wish to be sponsored and I don't want the stigma of asking for money, see me about that as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, he wants to get sponsored, reach out to companies, look at the, look at WPCC, Start look at different profile. opportunities, start a GitHub profile, right? Okay, excellent. So, additionally, I can also share, I mean, my full, uh, I work full-time on Five for the Future these days, and I'm also looking at seeing if this can be done project-wide as well. Like, if there's something that can be done where, you know, I can, we can bring companies together and, uh, you know, uh, and, and make teams together to bring out sponsorship opportunities and bring out like both connect connect people who want to be sponsored to companies. So you know how WordPress is, it's, it's, it's an open source project, it's built by a group of people, so this something like this needs a, a broader support. But hopefully someday we will have this, like something like GitHub sponsors built into WordPress, or maybe not in that way, but like some, some form of it. But in short, any contributors here who want to get sponsored, please feel free to ask. And I think uh, um, I'm going to probably ask somebody else here about this as well. So, what would make a good pitch? I mean, so let's say you want to be contributed, but you want to be sponsored by somebody. Like, how do you how do you like approach somebody? Like, who? Like, how do you make your case for it? So, does anybody have any thoughts? So, this is open to all of you. I can share. Go for it. Uh, so, for our company, uh, I saw uh, some people started contributing, but if you ask me. Uh, to select someone for sponsoring for their contribution, I would like to see how they have already contributed, mm -hmm. right? Excellent. So if you have already contributed, you showed your passion for that specific thing, uh, then probably it will be easier for uh, 
companies to select you for sponsorship. So first start contributing and then uh, look for the companies, ask for sponsorship. Uh, I think if you have uh, done major contribution, there are a lot of WordPress product company who are happy to contribute for your uh, contributions, right? Thank you. So I guess like first start contributing as a volunteer and once you've sort of built that and start looking at things. And I also want to resurface like many companies like Yoast has the diversity fund and you mentioned the good idea as a travel fund. So many companies and I guess some of the, I, I forget the exact names, but like many, many organizations, many companies actually have some funds like this. Folks who travel to word camps and things well, like that. A lot of companies have funds and a lot of companies are willing to give exactly. more fund. Exactly. Uh, right now, since uh, probably by seeing big companies, even the small companies are willing to contribute uh, as a sponsor. Right, right, that's right. So I think to summarize what we've discussed here, so if you if you would like to get sponsored, just ask. There's so many companies out there, there's so many opportunities. Uh, this Courtney mentioned GitHub. I think maybe you can even start a Patreon, right? Yeah, but so many open source developers actually use Patreon. So you could start a Patreon, you could start a GitHub sponsors, you could reach out to WPCC, you could reach out to companies themselves, like maybe write a proposal, right? So uh, I can see a couple of sponsored contributors over here and the folks who are willing to sponsor, maybe like after the discussion we can come to you. Looking at you, one <laughs> to see how you probably got sponsored. Anyway, so uh, we need to move on to the next part of our discussion, which is like, how can a company donate an employee to the WordPress project? So. Um, well, this is just as important and as we get into this, I want to quickly talk about the reason why companies should do this. I mean, if you look at it from a corporate or a business perspective, how does it make business sense for a company to, you know, contribute people? Because like, it seems like an overhead, especially, mind you, we are in very complicated economic times where companies have a hiring freeze going on. Like, my, my company has one. I mean, I mean, in the sense, like, many, many companies are not, like, they're not actively hiring, right? That's, that's, that's what's happening. Like, many, many, that's, that's, that's what's going on in the ecosystem. Like, um, so, in, in this, in this situation, like, how does it make sense for a business to actually sponsor contributors? What What is the business sense? I'm going to open this question to all the panelists, so maybe I'll start with Emmanuel. Um, personally, I don't know, because I was never in that position to, to work in a company. I'm a freelancer all my life. Uh, but imagine WordPress 10 years ago. If we didn't have all these contributors, if we didn't have all these companies that stood be behind, how many features wouldn't be done. And I'm not, I'm not talking just like a new core feature or a new plugin or something. I'm talking about myriad of other different things. So I think that's the biggest benefit. WordPress now and WordPress 10 years ago completely two different things. WordPress now powers so many websites uh, from like small family run businesses to blogs to huge uh, commercial websites, web shops and whatnot. Uh, that wouldn't be possible without contributions and without paid contributions because everything is okay when like things are good but from time to time you need like choose between do I want to work for free out of my passion and like out of the need to help other people and like provide for my family, for my kids uh, for people that I love and I, I, I want to help them uh, live their life and whatnot. So I'd say that that's like the biggest benefit. If we want to move WordPress even further, like to democratize publishing even more, uh, democratize web, not just publishing, then we need like to have companies to who understand that. And I'm really happy today to see so many companies that like contribute. I mean, before this uh, th this panel, uh, when I was asked to, to be part of, I, I didn't know you guys, I didn't know Afshahana as well. I didn't know how many companies contribute. And I was like, when I was researching for this panel, I went to make.wordpress.org and I see this person contributes like 40 hours. Uh, this person is contributing for 10 hours, for four hours. And it doesn't matter how many hours do we contribute, but that someone else has faith in what we do and they're willing to pay us for that. Like for this peace of mind that we need to have to like 
uh, give it back. I want to pass this to Courtney because I think she's in a very unique position to answer this. So, what do you? So I know, Hari, you have full-time hours at Automatic, and the way that Automatic tends to organize is there is a division of Automatic that only does done work things, for the most part. Um, whereas at other companies, you have kind of a mixture of things going on. So my role is not full-time. My role is, um, again, it varies. Where are we in the release cycle? What are the fires that I need to put out internally or externally or whatever? Uh, so my role, it kind of fluctuates. I would average that well over half of my time is in dot work related efforts. Somewhere between 50 to 75% of my hours are dot work related efforts. Um, and so we have a kind of a mixture of things going on. There are, there are individuals that we, that we sponsor that are not employees. They do not in any way act as employees. They are not in our internal comms at all. And we just know that they are doing good work and um, we give them some money because they should be able to not do clients and do that work. Then there are some folks like myself that it's part of our job description and that might be all the way up through full time. We've got two full time contributors, one to Core, which is Mike, and one to Gutenberg, which would be George Mamadashvili. Um, and that's, that's their purview of what they do. Um, and then we have some ad hoc stuff. So uh, some of our folks in Pagely, especially in Pagely, will find um, some, something in PHP that needs fixing, or someone finds a, a typo in some Gutenberg change log or whatever, and they just fix it because they see it and they're there. And that's not necessarily dedicated time in any capacity. They're just, they happen to be needing that item from, from something and they spot a, a bug or whatever, and they do the responsible thing and they log it on the clock and fix the change when they can do it. Um, so it's, it's varied in terms of how, from the business side of it, we structure things. And one of the areas that I'm always looking to improve without being overly creepy is tracking metrics. Because corporate folks, in order to justify this to the financial board that owns a publicly held company, I've got to have some data to tell them, here is why this is important, right? But quantifying, how long does it take to think about a thing? Because knowledge is work. Being able to sit and do things. So tracking shouldn't be about how many pull requests or how many people were listed on a core release because we're contributing to all of these teams, right? I'm on the training team. I've been leading meta meetings. That doesn't show up on a core release in terms of props. So props aren't a, uh, core props for a release is not a good metric for us. Um, time, clocking hours thinking, well, that, that's weird too. Um, and then also people don't like to have their privacy invaded and they don't want to be like quantified necessarily and all the things. So it gets complicated and I'm still exploring areas with that. I love talking about those things with people. Um, I, I feel like I understand both sides of the equation. Well, we got a question. Go ahead, Javier. Hi. I'll repeat it. I, yeah. Uh, so I, I have a big voice. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, do you so, want the mic? Ah, okay. So we've been thinking about this in the hosting team for some time because we know what we need. We know some companies, in this case in the hosting world, that have money, so uh, should be the make teams involved in this fight for the future part. So I'm I'm one of the team reps, so maybe I can write like a little project, maybe quantify the hours, maybe quantify the money, maybe, and publish that in some place and get all the people involved and be there because companies maybe don't want to be involved controlling the people but I'm one of the team reps I can check if things get done so maybe I we can be like somebody inside the process actually that idea that you shared uh, a couple of different learn.wordpress.org has a website folks, and it needs some help in development and functionality and some things. 
So not only do we need content, and we need to know what people need to learn to get started and to keep learning because WordPress and languages keep evolving, we also need to develop the website. And so a couple of companies that I had some conversations with have kicked around that idea of similar, Javier, um, Javier was saying about basically writing a document and here's what needs to be done and kind of quantifying it but from the team rep's perspective of things. And so I've kicked out the idea of running a sprint. Basically, if you're a dev, you're familiar with sprints. Sprint is you have a big, long epic that tells what, what the whole scope of maybe the year or a couple of years phases of projects is. And within that, you have sprints. And here's what we're doing in this little window of time. And that little window of time might still be like a six-week window of time. But you say, here's everything we're going to work on and get done. And, and I, I worked on these sprints with Vaughn that's sitting over here a lot. And then at the end, you have a retro, and you talk about what worked and didn't work. And I think the idea of um, other organizations that might want to contribute Setting up something like a sprint that says, oh great, this group of already existing co-workers might want to do the thing, and somebody, they need someone to organize what the thing is that they're going to do, and they can swing in as a team unit that already flows well, follow the guidelines that .org has, and get that knocked out. That could be really interesting. That's something that I've thought about, but it's great to hear other teams are thinking about it too, and how we could set that up. Um, I just have a like idea on a thing which could be maybe problematic a little bit is about decision making process by who is there makes the decision and if you have an existing team from let's say a hosting company who sponsors a whole team to do a hosting um, task for the WordPress community right. this could be an issue maybe yes it could also yes it very much could be an issue but. It's also an issue from both sides of this. Who, can, who, who gets sponsored can even be a privilege because I have been able to contribute in some fashion for, since 2009. So when my now employer saw that I had contributing experience, then they wanted to hire me. But what about the person that can't contribute until they get the sponsorship? Well, maybe speaking at a work camp could be part of that, and that might be a lesser commitment, right? Um, but then the flip side of who get the decision makers, that, that is, that is a, a big and a hard thing. So when, um, I love what Yoast does when they hold contributor days. They invite the public. They don't have internal conversations. They, during pandemic, we did three or four and I got up at 4 a.m. in my time zone to join them um, as part of the training team and said, here is what the training team and the marketing team are collaborating on today. And uh, we were all together in Zoom with Yoast, and some of them were in office, and the public also is. So maybe sprints like that could have people join in um, as well and not be exclusive in that sense. Um, I think that that's still, yeah, it's something, it's a, an idea to play with and see could we maybe work, make that type of situation work? Because from the employer side, if they, just, it depends on, on the company and what they're doing. Uh, I know that there is a large-scale agency that has wanted people to contribute. They go in and they get lost in Slack channels and meetings and, and things don't get, they don't finish an initiative. It's just, it, does, it feels like they're sending someone in that might be wasting time even from, from the employer's side of things. So from an employer's side, they're less likely to give people that time that are already employees because it's directionless. And so having some kind of a direction, but not being exclusive, maybe we could play with ideas on that. I don't know. Hey, thank you, folks. Uh, I think, um, do you want to? Yeah, I just want to say that uh, it was planned to be finished now. But if everyone is excited, we can <laughs> keep on. Talking about it. Yeah. I think we, we're almost done, but I uh, just want to quickly wrap things up. Yeah. And maybe, maybe like take a couple more audience. Sorry, sorry, go ahead, go, go for it. So, for it. What, what we discussed today, uh, I mean, we were the one talking mostly, but I think that a really good thing that we could do afterwards is just write a, a post. And, Courtney, I, I, I'm looking at you because <laughs> I think that you, you are the person who will write that. Maybe just like to, to summarize things that we, we talked and like kick, sort of kick some ideas uh, inside all that. I just have one. Um, 
I think uh, I, what sparked this idea to get, uh, or found the idea that uh, people are get sponsored uh, to contribute to WordPress in 2014 when I uh, attended to the WordCamp San Francisco and Community Summit. And since then, I'm looking for a company who's willing to sponsor my contribution time. I took a three-year sabbatical because of my health issues. And I'm like you, uh, self-employed and not that business type of person. I'm a, sometimes a people-pleasing person. <laughs> so, but I also uh, have not that big exposure before because I did also the contribution which would uh, have no props and it's not that visible. So um, that's also an issue to, to make yourself as a contributor also visible to, to get acknowledged about it. So, and that's also, I think, a difficult part because the most contributor I met on, on this uh, journey over contributing to WordPress over 13 years now um, is uh, a lot of people are introverted and are shy to ask. So, so I think it's the responsibility of our community to make tools and connections available for them. So they don't have this high bar level to um, overcome this, um, yeah, and, and get the courage to, yeah, I want to contribute to WordPress in the more amount of time I can afford. Uh, so I get sponsored for this, so. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so I would like to add, uh, for, I can understand your point. Um, uh, in our company, we have the people who are contributing for our company, they have like dedicated our contributing, not the full time. So our challenges is like, all of those people have specific role, so we cannot contribute their full time for the contribution, right? So we try to look for the people uh, who are already contributing so we can sponsor them. But interestingly, we didn't find anyone because no one asking for it. Uh, you should sponsor me. What do you in this part? <laughs> yeah, because and I, I, I had uh, this, uh, this discussion with few of other product owners as well. They also want to contribute, uh, but they don't have their extra resource that they can donate full time. And I think uh, many of them would like to contribute, not probably 10 or 20 sponsor contributor, but probably one to five. That would be good enough. But they, I need, I mean, we need to find them somewhere that they are looking for the sponsorship. They are uh, contributing already, right? Just to, to continue on that thought, I think that there are companies that are, for, for them it's easier to give money than to find a person in, inside a company. For example, I'm working as a freelancer, my partner and I, we are like a two-man band company, and we are constantly donating things like for, I don't know, people in need or whatever. It doesn't need to be like a huge amount, but uh, finding a way to like, channel that money to people that deserve it and like do a lot of contributions to the uh, WordPress, that would be like a... Yeah. I, I think you should look at Courtney's initiative. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so um, we are almost five minutes ahead of time. So I want to quickly summarize what we discussed today. I mean, especially around the... Um, so for, hope, so for folks who are looking for contributions, please feel free to advocate. You should advocate for yourself. Like write a proposal, create a GitHub profile, get a sponsor profile, create a Patreon, look into options like WPCC, there's so many, and hopefully we'll even have something in the project. Or at least you can come and talk to me because this is my full-time job. I, I connect contributors as well. This is what I do for work. This is what I do for a living. So I, I can also maybe help you. Um, and, and for companies looking at sponsorship, there's definitely a benefit to it, like all of you mentioned this. And a couple, of, couple more points that I'd like to add personally. I think there's a business, like there's a solid business case to contributing, especially if you're a WordPress company, you you contribute, your employees know where the product is going. And like, especially if you need hosting, need plugins, you can actually make business decisions based on that. And did you know that contribution is a learning opportunity? Like really. So if you have, especially if you're a small agency and if you have core contributors, that definitely elevates your you know, like your credibility. I've seen this locally, I've seen small companies who've 
contributed to core, like they've actually improved their reputation, they've gotten work. This has actually improved their business. And not just that, your employees, they learn so much. So I'm working on a, Courtney is also part of this. So we are working on a, a, a contributor mentorship project where like both sponsored and non-sponsored contributors, they can actually learn things. New people coming into the project, they can actually learn things. They learn actual skills which they can put to work. So you can, you can become better as an individual, you can become better as a professional by contributing, right? So hopefully we'll have a future where learn and contribution come together. So we have like an internship program or something. Yeah. You know, just, just doing some wild blows kind of thinking. So uh, I think we can wrap up, but maybe we can take like one or two more questions from the audience in case anybody's curious. Any, any thoughts, any questions? Go ahead. Uh, hello, my name is Arsen. So I founded a company and we are doing WordPress for about 10 years. And right now when I'm trying to hire new people, I see that young age is not interested to work in WordPress. So I'm wondering if big companies as a strategy to keep WordPress going, to keep WordPress growing, and uh, maybe they need to look for young age people and try to support them, try to sponsor them to make the contribution. What do you think? We have an educator here yeah. who I think... Is so I was teaching WordPress in high schools in 2015 using Pippin's plugins. If anyone's been around and remembers the Pippin's plugins videos, these days though, we have learn.wordpress.org. And one of the dreams that I have is that we take a combo of the, the content that's there, and we, we will need so much content. We need, we need as much, if not more, help than docs because we can address people through meetup groups, through direct learning. We've got courses on there. Um, educators could use all of those materials in classrooms. They're fit for classrooms right now. We have some rules where we can't directly market to youth with it because that would there's legal stuff. But a teacher could say, this video is fine for my classroom and I'm going to show it. So bringing it into educational institutions and then using things like the mentorship program Hari and I last night were talking um, about specifically what if this mentorship program were to approach uh, technical schools. Uh, I was teaching in a, a WordPress in a high school that was a technical school. So the students were either college bound or off directly to work out of computer programming background. And so what if we approach places like that and or higher ed institutes that that could be part of their internship during their training time as well, and already there are there are a lot of educators using things like edu blogs in schools. Um, students have been exposed to WordPress a lot of times, not always, but I, I've seen it pop up in different places. It's just that there is a disconnect from the time the teacher stops using it to them out in the workforce, and they don't know that the community exists. They don't know that there are these resources and people that are desperate for them and ready to come and help but it's out of the scope of WordPress.org to approach every university and every possible continent and right. So there is some bridge to happen with that in a long range type of fashion. What I would like to do is see that we've got enough complete learning pathways, meaning a series of courses on learn, and then start working with the locale ambassadors through polyglots around the globe and saying, hey, who do you know in education? Do you have anyone in your meetup groups that are like teachers that could get us in touch? And I've been in touch with some folks that work with um, the training materials that the EU organization implements, that they're creating some materials specifically around WordPress already. So couldn't we start talking with some of those kind of places where the standards of education find out some of the, at least the really large language areas um, the most common languages, let's get prioritized finding out the educational institutions within those and say, do you know that this resource exists and that we're powering 43% of the web and we could do that? And let's keep working on our youth camp program. We had a youth workshop yesterday. Um, a youth camp just happened last week in India that I saw went phenomenally well. So let's keep doing that as well. I'm not saying that that's not stopping that, but keep doing some of those things. Does anyone of you, do you want to add anything? Manuel, Shana. Any more questions? We can speak for hours. Yes. Yeah. This one we could. Yeah, yeah. We'll get to you. Yeah. Uh, just a quick question. Um, I, I, uh, 
I'm in awe that you put so much effort into it already. Um, can you enlighten us about uh, the future plans about the program? Is there a kind of a committee with, or team on a mentorship um, a deputy program, especially for the Five for the Future um, initiative? I would love to see that because uh, as we see in the WWE diversity with the speaker support training, uh, it's awesome to see. But I would like to see something like that in, uh, in the Five for the Future, that we have some kind of deputy program uh, to help companies also to vet contributors. So that maybe we need to make sure that there's also a, a kind of quality also. And that, that I, I fear that some people are jumping on the board. I, I would like to get some money to put some fixed three tickets and then disappear. So not, not that many people are intending to, but I think uh, it may be uh, watered down the initiative if we have such amount. As we see in a um, company um, who contributed to Five for the Future, the entry from the companies who say, I sponsor uh, uh, my employee um, with uh, 10 hours per week, and the employee does maybe five minutes per month. So that's a spam on, on the Five for the Future. That's what I'm thinking about to uh, maybe install a kind of a deputy program for this. Can I? Yes, please. Yeah, that's, that's a great question, first of all. And uh, honestly, I don't know the answer for it. But Five for the Future currently, at this point, it's a, it's a website. It started off as, a, like, as Courtney mentioned, Matt, it came out of a blog post from Matt asking people to contribute. Then in 2018, 2019, we have a website. We don't have a program over it yet. That's what I'm trying to I'm trying to build a program around it. So the community team right now has a contributor working group. Uh, Cody is a part of it, and, and, and like some of the community, Mike here over here is also a part of it. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to refine contributions. So the contributor working group actually kicked off in 2021. It was kind of, uh, it, it was active during the pandemic, then it like sort of got defunct. Now we are trying to revive it. So once the mentorship program is like more or less set, I think, Maybe this this working group can focus more on other things like contributions. So maybe it can it can look at contributions and improving the way things are and looking at five for the future and things like that. So that's the direction where things are going. You asked about the direction of the mentorship program. I think that was the first part of your question. Honestly, I don't know. So we're right. So to explain to share more context with you, uh, this working group is creating a mentorship. But even Patricia is also part of this. So we are creating a mentorship program for WordPress. We're doing a pilot. It's a test really. So there's going to be a first cohort starting in July. So we are going to put out a call for mentees soon in a more public web to space. We'll be inviting, we'll be getting, selecting 10 people, 10 uh, new contributors from WordPress. We'll have a group of mentees, mentors. So all these people, they'll be together in a Slack channel for one, one month, four weeks. Uh, these folks will get the training and mentorship. They'll learn about the project and they'll pick a make team. They'll start contributing towards that team. And our hope is that once they graduate, they stay on as long-term contributors. So this is open to both sponsored and non-sponsored folks.